Hi everyone, welcome back to MHK Building Solutions. Today we are diving into a hands-on review of a diagnostic test card designed by Sol PCB. You guys may have seen some other videos as well. This one in my hand is specifically designed for a Baxi range. Uh, these cards are blue in colour, so there is a colour differentiation as well. Uh, the one in the back in purple, those are for Ideal Boilers, Ideal Logics. Uh, and then there is another set of cards which is green and white in colour and that is for Worcester Bosch range. Uh, and I believe Sol is uh, in process of designing more for other ranges as well, for valence and, and the rest uh, of the boilers. Uh, but this one in particular, uh, as I mentioned, this is for Baxi range. So this has three cards inside of it. Uh, as you can see, uh, this very first one, if you have a look at the back, uh, it says it's for Baxi main Potterton combi system, um, 600 uh, and 800. Same with main 25 and 30 kilowatt and Potterton ashore. Um, and the other cards, again, they give us a uh, kind of information on what models these are for. So Baxi, Potterton, main Remiha range. Uh, and then the last one in this box uh, is for the combi systems uh, 200, 400, 600 and 800. So the one we're going to be using on this particular boiler is this one here. This particular card is tailored for a Baxi 600, the boiler we have in front of us today that we'll be carrying our testing on. Uh, but as I mentioned, Sol PCB offers versions for other models as well. This card indicates uh, a detailed pinout diagram and expected resistance values for components like NTC sensors, fan and gas valves. Uh, this information obviously is invaluable when diagnosing uh, any issues as it allows the accurate testing without any guesswork. Uh, you can find a lot more information on his website uh, which is www.solpcb. Dot com. Uh, now, if you have a look on the card itself, uh, it's also giving us uh, the error codes and the description of what those error codes may indicate on the boiler itself. So basically, it's pointing us in the right direction of which components to check, depending on the error we may find on the screen of the boiler. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we will uh, start with testing uh, or carrying out test on this particular boiler. It is very important to ensure that the boiler in question is safely isolated. Uh, in our case, this boiler is isolated because it's actually sat on a table in my boiler den uh, with no power going into it. But it's very crucial to carry out your uh, safe isolation process before you carry out any testing on any of these cards. Every single card has got a warning triangle on it. And it also tells us that this card is not designed or suitable for live testing. Okay, so this is for dead testing only by professionals. So by gas engineers or trainee gas engineers under direct supervision of a gas engineer. Uh, so guys, this is not for homeowners uh, or DIYers. Okay, uh, so that's warning out of the way. Boiler needs to be safely isolated before we proceed with that. So I've dropped the front lid down on the boiler and let's start by removing the PCB cover. So the PCB cover is now removed. What we need to do before we do anything else is we need to familiarise ourselves with the layout of the PCB as well as the layout of the card that we're using as well. My multimeter decided that it's going to go off on us because... I left it on for too long, so we'll turn that back on shortly. Let's save some battery on it. But yeah, so I was saying, we need to familiarise ourselves with the layout of the card as well as the layout of the PCB. That's crucial. Um, obviously, this removes all the guesswork and having to trace cables. But there's no harm in having a quick look and familiarising ourselves with which colour cable is going where, for example, within the boiler. Now, if you can spot a sensor, there's an NTC just there, on the pipe that's coming from the pump going into the main heat exchanger. So that becomes our return pipe. So the thermistor, the NTC connected on that return pipe is obviously a return NTC. So the two cables in that spade connector uh, are two blue cables. And if you can spot the one at the back just there, 
that is on the pipe that's coming out of the main heat exchanger going into the manifold at the bottom so that becomes our flow pipe so the NTC cables uh, connected to that are red in colour. Now this card will give us information uh, on where those cables are coming and connected onto the connector itself but what we need to look at is if you can read it says X22 on this big connector here okay what we need to do is we need to have a quick look at the PCB and see which connector out of these is X22 so we can remove it from the PCB connect it onto here and what that will give us is if you have a look at these points once we've got the connector on then we can put our multimeter or the probes of the multimeter onto these points here to carry out the testing that we need to do uh, so this is where one is giving us clear information on where everything is but it's also giving us a test point where we can connect our probes easily as I'm sure all of you will agree that trying to put probes into these connectors uh, can be damaging and also uh, difficult at times and also this doesn't give us any information so what we have to do is we either have to memorize everything which is almost uh, impossible to memorize everything about every single model and manufacturer to know which cable is going where or X for example X22 on one of these uh, contains cables for flow and return NTCs, the flu NTCs, the turbine etc uh, or we have to then open up the manufacturer's instructions manual and we need to trace it there. This gives us all of that information just on that card here. Okay, so X22 on here is X22 connector on the PCB which is clearly marked. So this connector there is actually an X22 connector uh, and that's where we need to connect it. So the next step is to do some testing, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we have a fault code on the boiler showing, uh, let's say, E40. So that's indicating that it's a return thermistor that's faulty. Now, the return thermistor, if you look at the card itself, uh, is just here, which means that it's on a X22 connector there. X22 connector on the PCB is this large one here. So let's remove it off the PCB. So that's removed off the PCB. Let's simply just connect it to the card itself. I would like to re-emphasize at this stage, we need to ensure that there's no power coming to the boiler. Okay, so you carried out your safe isolation process prior to removing any cover off the PCB, let alone touching the connectors. So once that was ensured, uh, we remove this connector and put it onto this test card. So now we can carry out some testing using this card. Let's put it this way so we can clearly read where return NTCs are. Uh, right at the bottom on the card, we have flow NTCs. So the first two are flow NTC connections and then the one on top are return NTC connections. So our multimeter is set to ohms. All we are going to simply do next is we need to put our probes on two test holes on this card and let's just get some readings 15.25 kilo ohm just to ensure that this thermistor is working if you just touch this pipe close to the thermistor can you see the reading dropping so that's a difference in temperature just because I've put some body heat onto that pipe as you can see it started to reduce the reading the warmer the pipe gets the lower the reading okay so the hotter the pipe the lower the reading 15 uh, kilo ohms or 15,000 ohms uh, indicates around 14 degrees which is correct for this room temperature where I'm sat so that's how easy it is to carry out testing using this card and that was just a simple demonstration of return thermistor we can carry out same test on our flow thermistor, on flue thermistors, or if the boiler indicated a different fault. Uh, let's just put this connector back in and I will quickly demonstrate one of the other connectors. So for example, let's say a gas valve which is X36. Uh, it says GV on it. Although there are five connections, 
there's literally two of these points where we need to check. Okay, so if we needed the resistance reading on our gas valve, we will simply remove X36 connector from our PCB, connect it onto here. These are the two points we need to connect our uh, probes to, and we will get our readings. Let's quickly do that. So X36, I can see, is this connector here. So that's the connector that's marked as X36 on the PCB. So all we're gonna do is we'll simply remove this connector from the PCB, so that's removed now, and we will connect it onto our X36 connector. Yep, there we go. So X36 is now connected. As I mentioned earlier, both points to test are marked. So all we will do is we will put our multimeter probes or test probes onto these two points and we should get our resistance reading, 42.1 ohms. Uh, so that is how you can carry out testing on this. In fact, if you have a closed look, if you can read on it here, gas valve up to 43 ohms, uh, plus or minus 5% is classed as good reading on here. So it gives you that information as well as a reference point. But that's how easy it is to carry out testing using this card, carry out dead testing using this card uh, designed by Soul PCB. Uh, I highly recommend this product to those who are in uh, boiler repair uh, section. Uh, this is really, really good value for money and it will definitely make your life a lot easier. So guys, if you are interested in obtaining these cards, just go on to www.soulpcb.com and you can purchase these cards directly from there. Uh, I highly recommend these cards uh, for all those who are in the repair trade. Uh, and even if you're learning uh, on how to repair, uh, it does take away all the guesswork. Uh, I hope you found this video informative. Uh, thanks for watching. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to MHK Building Solutions for more practical guides and reviews. Feel free to leave any questions in the comment section below and we will do our best to assist you. Guys, stay safe and see you in the next video. Bye for now.